on the day that Sudan's military council and the opposition coalition were supposed to announce a deal to form a transitional government, a setback appears. And the announcement that came was contrary to what people expected just 24 hours before. We have decided to stop all sorts of negotiations for 72 hours with the Freedom and Justice Alliance and the removal of barricades from roads and bridges. It all started on Wednesday evening when protesters say a faction of the Sudanese military, known as the Rapid Support Forces, opened fires on them after they refused to allow the removal of barricades they set up. This is a bullet casing. It's one of the live ammunition. What happened is that the forces beat up those guarding the barricades ahead, and when the protesters tried to defend the barricades, they were shot at. The Sudanese Doctors Committee says at least a dozen people have been injured in a scene that unfolded very much like the one from Monday night, when five people were killed and more than 200 wounded. Wednesday evening's events happened less than 24 hours after the opposition coalition and the military council which ousted Sudan's 30-year president Omar al-Bashir announced progress in talks to form a transitional government. The coalition said the attacks were an attempt to disperse protesters at the sit-in at army headquarters less than 500 meters away. It's now in its sixth week, with protesters saying they're there to put pressure on the military council to hand power to a civilian rule. The opposition coalition, which has been leading the calls for the protests and the sit-in, has urged protesters to remove the new barricades set up on main roads. No one will scare us with bullets. We'll stay and face the bullets, but it will be organized and united, and it will have certain points. A barricade can be guarded by a thousand people, but we shouldn't have thousands of barricades we can't defend. Our plans didn't include many of the main roads. We'll now open those roads and return to the roads laid out in our maps. And the protesters listened. They moved the barricades back to the perimeter set up when the sit-in started on April 6. Some analysts say some factions of the military stand to lose if a deal is reached between the council and the opposition. There were allegations that the uh, rapid security forces, which are under the vice president, Hameti, uh, attacked the crowd on Monday. There were a number of deaths. Uh, and it's quite possible the same forces are involved here. He is, after all, the kingpin in the whole of the military structure uh, that is responsible for holding the whole of the security forces together. And I dare say that he's not too happy about the idea of sharing power with the civilians. Meanwhile, those at the sit-in say they know they are the power base for the opposition and the pressure card against the military council to hand over power. They say they won't end their sit-in despite the violence until their demands are met. With the new orders from the military council, their determination to continue with the sit-in will be tested. Hiba Morgan, Al Jazeera, Khartoum.